You know I test a lot of premium laptops on this channel. I just did the Huawei MateBook X Pro, one of my favorite ultra portables here in 2018. I have the HP Spectre X360, the 15 inch model running the new KB Lake G processor coming the next day or two. I will be posting that. And I also have other premium laptops in the works, but I wanted to go back to a budget laptop that I've been really anticipating. It's running the all new Gemini Lake processor. It's the Intel Celeron N4100. And I just took delivery of the Jumper EasyBook X4. It's got four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It's got an SSD, 128 gigabytes. And this is my first look at it. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the Jumper EasyBook X4 coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Of course, don't forget to hit the notification icon, letting you know when I post new videos. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter to get all the latest updates. The Jumper EasyBook X4 is on flash sale over at GearBest. It's $299 and they sent this over for my unbiased opinion. I'm not being paid or being sponsored by GearBest. The EasyBook X4 is my first look at a laptop running the Gemini Lake processor. It's the Intel N4100 Celeron processor. It's got 4 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and it has 128 gigabytes of SSD storage. Now GearBest sent this over via DHL and if you're going to order from GearBest, I highly recommend going with DHL rather than say something like China Post. Now of course, depending on your country, you may have to pay an import tax, so please keep that in mind. Now the box was a little bit beat up, so I was a little bit surprised, but everything seemed to be okay inside. Again, there are some specs on the box. You get your power charger, uses a barrel pin connector to charge this device. You get a quality assurance card and some documentation in both English and Chinese. And you'll notice on the bottom there's an access door where you can swap out the SSD, but I think the SSD has some pretty good speeds, I'll show you in a minute. Overall build quality is actually very good. This looks like a very high-end premium device. It doesn't look like a $300 laptop, that's for sure. This is a very thin and light laptop. You're looking at 2.9 pounds or 1.3 kilograms and only 0.51 inches thick. The Jumper EasyBook X4 sports a 14-inch Full HD display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1080, that's 157 pixels per inch, and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now this does not have an IPS panel. That means you're not going to get as good of a screen as you would as if you had an IPS panel. A TN panel is good, but the viewing angles are not going to be as good and the blacks are not going to be as deep and color is not as vibrant. Having said that, this is a matte display and it's actually not a bad for a TN panel. So if you're looking straight on, it looks pretty good. But when you're off to an angle or off to the side, you'll notice the difference. And the bezels aren't too bad. They're not too thick as you'd normally find on a $300 laptop. This is pretty good actually. And it's a pretty bright display, although I'm not sure exactly if it's over 300 nits or not. I'll do my full testing in my full review and give you all the numbers. But suffice it to say, this for a TN panel is not bad. Of course, I would have preferred an IPS display. But the good news is this has one of the best keyboards I've ever used on a budget laptop. It's really good. It's got really good key travel. The keys are nicely spaced out. You don't feel like your fingers are going to bottom out and has very good tactile feedback. And it has something you don't normally see from a $300 laptop, especially from China, a multi-stage backlight, and it works really well. Keys light up evenly, and it really is great for when you're in a low light or a dimly lit environment. It's that good. Now it really has a nicely sized touchpad. It has precision drivers working pretty well. I'm able to use my two finger scrolling and Windows 10 gestures work on it. And when it comes to the port selection, I think it's okay. When you look on the right side, you find your micro SD card slot for storage expansion, USB type A, it's a 3.0, and you have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack along with your DC in to charge the device. Unfortunately, there's no USB-C on this device, which is a bit of a disappointment. And on the left side, you have another USB 3.0 type A and a micro HDMI to connect to a TV or a monitor. Again, a lack of a USB type C is my only gripe here. Now the speakers are located above the keyboard by the hinge and they're actually okay. I don't think they're the greatest things I've ever heard. Although let's take a listen to get a little bit of an idea of how it sounds. So 
So as you can hear, it doesn't have too much bass. The mids are decent, but not great. I would say that this is certainly okay for a $300 laptop. It's certainly not premium sounding, that's for sure. Now there's a two megapixel front facing webcam. Let's see it in action. So this is the front facing camera on the Jumper EasyBook X4. It's uh, so so, but it will certainly get the job done. If you want to do Skype, if you want to do some video conferencing and you need it in a pinch, this will certainly do the job. But I want to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know. Now this has a SSD in it, not EMMC, which you sometimes find on these budget laptops. And since it has an SSD, it's a B-Win actually. And it actually has some pretty good reads and writes. Check it out with the Crystal Disk Mark results. And of course you could always swap it out to put your own SSD as this has an access store on the bottom. I like that approach. I wish more manufacturers would do the same. Performance is actually pretty good. This only has four gigabytes of RAM. The good news is it's DDR4, not DDR3. So that's good news, but I was expecting a little bit higher on this Geekbench 4 result. I will do my full testing to let you know all the benchmarks coming very soon. So stay tuned for that. So far, it's a bit of a mixed bag. The good things on this laptop are the fact that it has a really nice design, very good all metal premium construction, really solid, thin and light laptop. It looks much more expensive than its $300 price tag. The negatives being here that it doesn't have an IPS panel. They went with a TN panel and I think Jumper missed the boat on this one. I think it could have been a lot better. Now, as far as the TN panel is concerned, it's okay. But again, you're not gonna get those good viewing angles. You're not gonna get the deep blacks or as vibrant colors as say you'd get with an IPS panel. So that's a bit of a disappointment. I do look forward to testing other Gemini Lake laptops, hopefully with IPS panels coming very soon. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I will do my benchmarks, run all the tests on this laptop and report my findings very soon. So stay tuned. That full review will be coming to you very shortly. So what do you think about the Jumper EasyBook X4? Initial impressions, less than 24 hours, excellent build quality, thin and light. Love the keyboard. The fact that it has a multi-stage backlight's even better. Uh, trackpad's running okay. I like the access door in the back, which will let you put your own SSD, although the B1 SSD that's in this got some of the best reads and writes out of a budget laptop from China. Uh, so far, really good. Biggest disappointment, as you know, is the TN panel. They didn't go with the IPS panel, and that, to me, I think was a big miss. But again, I will do my full testing in that full review. Let me know in the comment section below if there's any specific thing you want me to test with this laptop. I'll certainly try to make that happen. Battery life, I'm thinking around five to six hours. So far, again, I will have to do some further testing and report my findings. And don't forget, this is on flash sale right now at GearBest 299. I will put the link below for more information and where you can buy one. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.